Another brick fan here with a collectible minifigure series. This is from the Lego Batman movie. This is set 71017, was released in January 2017. Has 125 pieces, 20 minifigures, and each blind bag cost about $4. So if you picked all the right bags, this set would only cost you about $80, which is about what I still paid for it online. As you might expect, there's a lot of Batmans in this series, five to be exact, and they're all there on the front row. There's also a Catman there in the back row that looks an awful lot like Batman, so that makes some of the feeling of these bags a little difficult. And if you're interested, I did do a field guide where I opened all 20 of these bags that I received. For, fortunately for me, I knew that I had all 20 figures because I bought them as a set. But I tried to give some tips and tricks into finding the pieces if you happen to see these blind bags available anywhere. Some of my favorites in this set really have to be the guitar or glam metal Batman right here in front. Really nice figure. I like the guitar. I like the silver bat symbol printed on his cowl. I think that looks great. I really do like the red hood figure, which is back there in the back. Commissioner Gordon here, kind of in the middle. He's also a really good print, lots of good detail, and he's got that really nice Joker Wanted poster. And then all the way in the back, the calculator is kind of an offbeat villain, but I really like how they did the hello print there, and that costume that they did for him is really nice. Let's take a look at each of the minifigures individually. First up, we have Lobster Lovin' Batman and Glam Metal Batman. Let's take a look at the little accessories here. First up, we have this little lobster, as you can see. So, Lobster Thermidor, if I remember from the movie correctly. Batman also has this plate piece. It has printing on it, which I haven't seen before. Sure, it's happened, but this is looks like some lettuce and then sauce there. Like a plate with some lettuce and some sauce, so nice print on the plate as well. And then Glam Metal Batman has this nice black and silver guitar that goes with his outfit. So good accessories for both of these characters. As you can see, Batman's got this really nice robe going on here in the black and red, which I think looks really nice. I think the printing is very consistent all the way from the torso all the way down the legs. He's, of course, wearing his bat cowl. And then underneath he has the face with the white printing above it to give the white eyes when the cowl is in place. Pretty typical of these Batman figures. Glam Metal Batman has these big spiked shoulder pads, this fantastic cowl with the silver bat printing on it. Once again, his face is done with a regular minifigure head, but then it's got a regular minifigure print, and then it's got the black with just a little bit of white, indicating that his eyes are closed. Very low cut shirt here, exposing, you know, his chest and abs that he's very proud of. Looks like sort of a bat symbol printed here in silver. And then the gray legs and the printing even all the way down to the toes. Both these have side printing, so you see that pattern from the robe on the sleeve here, printing on the side of the legs, and then there's a wrist print here on our Glam Metal Batman. And Lobster Lovin' Batman continues that nice print in the back. No printing on the back of Glam Metal Batman, but you see that he's got the solid silver legs with the black printing, and then our Lobster Lovin' Batman actually has dual molded legs. No alternate expression on either one of these. And we have one of these older style stiffer capes, but looks pretty good. Lots of capes in this minifigure series, as you'll see. Once again, the side printing on the arms. And back to the front. Next up, we have Fairy Batman, which is done in this all pink. It's got this trans pink 
wand piece. Kind of nice. And then our Clan of the Cave Batman has this nice club piece with a lot of spikes on it. The Fairy Batman is a pretty, pretty silly piece, actually, and kind of a funny costume. You can see by the look on his face here, he's not very happy about it. But interestingly, they used pink here, so the same color as the cowl, to kind of provide the eyes behind the cowl, which I think creates a nice little effect. You can just barely see the whites in there and then the pink surrounding. I like these little skirt pieces. I think that looks really good. Once again, dual molded legs, black and pink. It looks like he's wearing some ballet slippers, perhaps. Our clan of the cave, Batman, has brown and white printing for the eyes. And then also a kind of sad expression on his face, but again, matching the cowl. The cowl has some printing on it. It looks like it's kind of stitched together. It has some cuts in it or something. It's got the nice cheetah print look going on here. Kind of a short, more of a kind of a Flintstones type look. I really do like this bat symbol carved on the rock that he's wearing around his neck. And then he's got printing down his legs as well. Both figures have side printing. See some wristbands here on the side of our cave, Clan of the Cave Batman. Printing of the more of the tutu type pink printing and the two colors of pink there. On the back, we have these nice trans pink wings for our fairy Batman, the dual molded legs, as I pointed out earlier. The back of our Clan of the Cave Batman, again, you can see he has the dual molded legs, but no printing on the back. No alternate expression on Fairy Batman or on Clan of the Cave Batman, but a continuation of the printing on the sides for both of them. Next up, we have Vacation Batman and Barbara Gordon. Vacation Batman has this wonderful wetsuit it has bat symbols in yellow all over it. He's got goggles, swim goggles, over his cowl. This little life preserver shaped like a rubber ducky is awesome, especially with this Batman mask that the duck is wearing. Barbara Gordon is in her full dress police uniform with a pair of handcuffs and the button for the bat symbol. So that activates the bat symbol and calls Batman in. Really good red hair and an integrated hat here for her police hat with a gold trim I think looks really good. This sash that comes down across her body is actually lines up really well with her legs so you get it ends right at the edge of her legs so it looks really good. Moving around you see this is a short sleeve wetsuit for Batman, but more of those yellow bat symbols. Barbara has a police badge symbol on her side here. Get a good look at this really fancy hair piece with a hat and red hair. More back printing with more of those bat symbols. No alternate expression here for Batman or for Barbara Gordon. Put a continuation of that sash and belt here along the back. Once again, the badge or police symbol here printed in gold on her arm. Batman with the short sleeves. Two very good looking figures. Next up we have Commissioner Gordon and the Joker in his Arkham Asylum orange jumpsuit. Commissioner Gordon comes with this walkie-talkie piece and a very nice wanted poster for the Joker printed on this 2x2 two two tile, which I think looks very good. Joker is handcuffed here. I think the printing on Commissioner Gordon is done really well. 
I think the they did a good job with this hair piece and it's actually kind of two-toned they have some a little bit of white printing along with the gray printing which is pretty good and then the eyebrows and mustache I think match this hair piece pretty well it's got kind of a rumpled white shirt underneath here good printing for his vest and you can see his holster over here as well as his badge down here on his legs so good continuation of the printing from the torso down through the legs Similarly, with the Joker, we have the good orange jumpsuit print here, kind of wrinkled as well, but it does look consistent all the way down through his legs. He's got a sad expression here. I love these Joker hair pieces and the bright green and just the hair kind of all over the place. Commissioner Gordon has his sleeves rolled up, it looks like, on his arms there. And here's that slight lighter printing here on the edges of that hair piece I was talking about. And you see the continuation of his vest and his holster here. You have the Arkham logo on the back of the jumpsuit for Joker. No alternate face for Commissioner Gordon, but the Joker does have a smile on his face here, at least a small one, making you think that he's probably up to something. Probably not my favorite Joker that I've seen, but it does fit with the theme of the movie and the scene that this is designed on. Next up, we have Dick Grayson in Pink Power Batgirl. Dick Grayson has this shark repellent. Dick comes with this shark repellent, which is cool with this little printed cylinder piece with the no shark on it. And then on the back or the other side of it, it actually does say shark repellent on it. Pretty good throwback back to the original 60s Batman series. Our pink power Batgirl has a pink Batarang. I think the Dick Grayson is printed really nicely. Again, you get the goggles, the big glasses that he's wearing that really magnify his eyes as part of the hair piece. If you take this off, he's just got a regular minifigure print here with a large grin. He's got a white shirt and a sweater over the top and then some good printing down the pants here. Pink Power Bat Girl. Pink Power Bat Girl is wearing this good bat suit with the silver and the silver bat belt here. I like this skirt piece. I think that's a really good piece. And of course, she has her red hair. And if you look closely, you can see that silver headband or hair tie in her on her back of her hair there. Moving this around, you see she does have printing on her wrists. You get a better look at that hair tie and the big red ponytail she's got going on. A big pink cape here. So Dick Grayson has continuation of that sweater printing here. No printing on the back of our Batgirl. No alternate expression for Dick Grayson, but we do have an alternate expression for Batgirl here, as you can see. The pink on Batgirl is a little overwhelming for me, but I still think it's a nice looking figure. Next up, we have Red Hood and the Eraser. The Red Hood is a classic villain from the Batman, early Batman series, and turns out it was an early incarnation of the Joker. So in this case, he has these machine pistols that he comes with. These are a nice little mold and then the eraser comes with a tablet basically it's a tablet that he can write on and erase stuff from obviously the red hood has this really nice shoulder piece and then the hood the hood is just a two by two circular cone piece here no way to see through it it's and then he does have a red masked 
minifigure head below that. Some good printing of a suit with a purple vest here. The eraser is here in a yellow pinstripe suit with some printing on the front of his feet here. He also has this nice headpiece that looks like the end of an eraser with a pink rounded tile on top. Moving around the figures, there you can see some more pinstriping here on the side of the eraser. And even down the sides of his legs, as you notice. The back printing is consistent with the front, and again, this does really look like the end of a pencil. No printing on the back of the red hood here, and that cape is actually under the shoulder piece, so it doesn't move around much. Once again, the side printing that we were seeing, and then those pinstripes that we were talking about. Next up, we have Nurse Harley Quinn and an orca. Nurse Harley Quinn has this chart. The chart, as it turns out, is a chart for the Joker. And of course, she's written a heart there with Harley plus Joker. So I think it's kind of a cool print. I really like her hair piece with these pigtails. They look really good. And then there's a post receiver here, a hole in the top, which was what this little nurse's hat clips into. And that looks great. As you can see, the printing is really good on the front with her stethoscope, with her scrubs, and then a. And then she's wearing some red, which look like boots to me. Some nice toe printing. Our orca is a really nice print here on the body. He doesn't have many figure arms. He has these big flipper pieces, which are appropriate. The minifigure head is just the inside of the orca's mouth, which I think is really clever. You put that orca piece over the top. And as we move around, you see that nice printing here for the eyes. And you got the teeth around here. Looks really good. Harley has got this nice printing on her arms as well and then you see this orca piece has the fin in the back and the tail which also look quite good printing on the side of both of the legs on these figures harley's got the dual molded legs with the white and red she does not have an alternate expression but you see the nice distinction with the black and red and then the opposite for the hair bands which i think is cleverly done and then some more printing on the other arm here harley really turned out nice and this orca is a very good design as well next up we have zodiac master and cat man zodiac master comes with a couple of these silver animals so he's got a silver fish and this silver crab piece these aren't new pieces, but they're really nice to get in this metallic silver color. I like the printing on Zodiac Master. He has this good hood piece, and then I think they did a great job in not having the skin tone bleed through, or the blue bleed through the skin tone, so that looks really good. Doesn't always seem to happen. He has a bunch of Zodiac symbols here in gold on his uniform. Wearing some black shorts, it looks like, or tights. Over the rest of him here, Catman. Looks a lot like Batman, even down to having a utility belt in this brown. Of course, the rock hard abs. He does have this these scratches on him, I think, which kind of indicate his symbol, perhaps. And he's using these claw pieces. Dual molded legs with the gold or yellow and brown. The cowl is slightly different. It doesn't have the under. It doesn't go all the way around on the bottom like the Batman cowl does. It's open here on the bottom. And you can see his face print there with a the white on top to give him the white eyes when the cowl is in place. Moving to the side, you see Zodiac Master has more Zodiac symbols printed here. Again, more on the back. The back of Catman is quite plain, but you do see the dual molded legs for sure there. A 
Then more symbols and different symbols up and down the legs and arms on our Zodiac Master. He may have all 12 Zodiac symbols. I haven't really gone back through and checked, but could be. So two nicely done figures here as well. Next up we have March Harriet and the calculator. March Harriet has this nice bunny ear helmet kind of piece or hood type piece. She is carrying a Tommy gun. A nice interesting mold here. Calculator has this great big shoulder piece with a calculator print here on the front as well as this visor here which has the 07734 which when I was in grade school was kind of the thing to do when you first got your calculator. Flipping that over makes it say hello. So a classic calculator trick. His head is also done in this pink or lavender, the same kind of color that is on the body here. And then the printing is great because the flesh color is very solid on that lavender headpiece, which, and without any of it bleeding through. March Harry, it looks like she's got kind of a corset going on here. You know, very tight, no shoulders on that little white tie type piece and coming down with some stockings and down to her shoes here. An interesting look for this character. She does have some wristbands on and then our calculator has more of this white checkered printing down his arms and legs. This Backpack looks like it's all integrated together as one piece, maybe a jet pack as well. Dual molded legs here. More skin showing through here, which I think again is printed pretty well. A little bit darker than the arms perhaps, but still pretty consistent. No alternate expression for her or for the calculator for that matter. Going back again, some more of that side printing. I think this calculator, as I mentioned in the intro, is a very, very good character. Our last two minifigures are King Tut and the Mime. King Tut has two accessories. So he has a golden staff with a serpent on the top. And then he's also got a serpent with him as well. Our mime is shooting lightning out of her hands. These look like the same lightning pieces that are used for the Emperor in Star Wars themed sets. But nice pieces. Both of these have great head pieces. So I've always been a fan of the Pharaoh headdress here. I think it looks really good. I like the white with the gold accents. This mohawk piece is really nice as well. And I've seen that on a couple of other figures in different colors, but it's really nicely done. It doesn't seem to stay on her very well though. So you kind of got to be careful about that. It tends to fall off a lot. Good printing on the Pharaoh with all this gold and different blues and reds printed all the way down and very consistent between his legs here. Very consistent down his legs here, which is always nice to see as well as with the mime. She has this kind of tights going on with a uh, print down leggings perhaps on her legs which all looks really good. The white printing on the flesh colored minifigure head turned out well. Again not a lot of bleeding through that. The color looks pretty consistent and also on the pharaoh you see this little chin piece here too which I think looks very good. Moving around, you see the Pharaoh does have printing down the sides of his legs, printing on the sides of the arms and legs of the mime. The back of the mime continues on that kind of tight fitting outfit she's got going on. The Pharaoh does not have an alternate expression and his back is very plain, although you see that 
His legs are actually in three colors, with the lowers being flesh color, a white, and a red. So a complicated leg piece for the pharaoh. Obviously no alternate expression on our mime either. No side printing on this side of the pharaoh, but we do continue with the side printing for the mime. So that's our close look at all 20 minifigures from this series. Let's go back and I will give you my final thoughts on this collectible minifigure series. Overall, a really good series. I like a lot of these figures. Most of them I remember seeing in the movie and I think these all turned out really well. I like some of the gold printing on the Zodiac Master and getting that fish and crab piece and that metallic silver is also pretty cool. The rubber duck life preserver there that Batman is wearing is fantastic, especially with the Batman mask on his face there. I think that's a nice touch and I really did like the all those bat symbols on the swimming suit or wetsuit that Batman, that vacation Batman is wearing there. I also like the King Tut figure. I think the printing on that is really good and I've always liked that headdress piece that was first introduced back when the Adventurer series came out. So that's pretty nostalgic for me as well. Hope you've enjoyed my thoughts on this minifigure series. I'm going to get going on another video, but until then, happy building. If you enjoyed this video, hit that like button and subscribe to my channel for more of my content. I've left a link up here on the screen for my other collectible minifigure reviews.